it. We're doing a quick tabletop uh, pre-review, so to speak, of the Lueton LT-118, and yeah, that is a very big dog in the background there. Wyatt, buddy, go away, go play, go eat some sticks. Anyway, this is uh, you know, your typical Chinese handheld <clears throat> VHF uh, monobander, except this one has a claimed output of 10 watts, which is higher than anything else in the market right now, basically. There's a lot of claims and a lot of BS going around about power output on handhelds. Um, this one supposedly had been tested and was actually doing 10 watts out, so I had to pick one up. I live in the boonies, and sometimes uh, even uh, ham radio gets sketchy out and about. So, as far as looking at the radio itself, decently made, about 50 bucks currently on Amazon. Okay belt clip, PTT, it feels okay, it's, it's good, it's not great. Um, fits in the hand, eh, a little big to actually fit in my hand, but uh, it's just not bad. You get an idea with the Baofang next to it, the size, a little bigger than a Baofang, quite a bit thicker. But still, nowhere near as big as this ICOM over here. It's the ICOM V82. Uh, this is a 7 watt radio, so we're going to do a little power test and just to see what's what with these radios. Before I do the power test, I will mention um, the one of the favorite uh, replacement antennas for these Chinese handhelds is the Nagota NA701. An NA701 will not fit on this radio due to the way it's threaded. Um, it's the same, it's the correct type of adapter and everything, but just the way it's threaded, it won't fit in. So you may have to cut down the plastic around the edge of here to get that to fit on there, or um, possibly just run a BNC adapter. In fact, I beg of you, just run the BNC adapter. It's so much better than these uh, stupid SMA type connectors. Anyway, first up, we will one-handedly plug in our 7 watt ICOM into the dummy load, and we will see what she registers. That being medium power and four watts. High power, right there. Doing almost exactly seven watts. Okay, thank you ICOM. Exactly as advertised on medium and low power. So, we've established ICOM V82, and if you buy a used V82, be very careful where you buy it from. There's a lot of Chinese knockoffs that just aren't the same quality of the original ICOM. Now for the Luaton. Luaton, I don't know. At some point, these Chinese radio companies will get a little smarter and uh, start calling it uh, a more American-friendly name. Anyway, here's our 10-watt Chinese radio, and we'll see what she does. Look at that. On that, that's about 9.5 watts. Right in there. Right up. Very close to 10. So that's probably 9.6 watts. Um, running this on an actual antenna, I was able to get a couple extra 100 milliwatts out of these radios. Uh, for the record, the, this regular bow thing actually did a little bit better than 5 watts into here. Both into the uh, Tentec dummy load and into a mobile antenna that I tried. So um, it, does, it does put the power out. It does put out, so to speak. So that's... Uh, it's a cool thing. On the other hand, it's a terribly bad radio if it's going to be your first or only ham radio. Don't buy it. Buy a UV5R, even better. Buy an entry-level ICOM. Uh, you'll be much better served by one of those um, as your first radio. But if you like to do bicycle mobile or anything that requires a little extra power, um, you could possibly, you know, make a APRS uh, out of this tracker. That'd be pretty cool. Extra few watts does help. So we're getting, you know, about nine and a half. Um, did about 9.8 watts into the antenna I tried earlier. So it does what it's supposed to power-wise. Uh, unbelievable. One of my favorite features about this radio, other than the fact it's advertised as being anti-wrestling, which, I don't know, anti-wrestling, but uh, it's funny. The case is durable, 
forget the camera work. This is where you need a tripod. Anyway, I don't have an assistant. There we go. See, it's got a nice aluminum chassis underneath this radio. A nice, and it's apparently, like I said, it's anti-wrestling, whatever that means. I don't think that's actually written on the box. It's not, but um, advertisement. As you have with the UV5R, they're just plastic. Plastic, manby pamby plastic, just all plastic. I don't know about the high power models, but these are all plastic. Uh, the ICOM, really nice die cast. If you have the money, buy the ICOM. But um, as far as real world, whether or not uh, we're going to run a nice little test in the near future, um, the ICOM versus the Lueton. And we'll see if there's any difference in those extra few watts. We're going to run the same same uh, BNC antenna and everything. Might even try a mobile antenna in there too. So stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna use it to, and see if I see if I keep it or see if I give it to my my dog as a chew toy. You want to eat that? Eat that? Hmm? Eat that? No. Don't eat that. Bad chemicals in that. Or if I keep it, or if I buy another one, who knows? Um, anyway, that's it. Uh, programming software, <laughs> good luck. It took me a couple hours to get mine sorted out. It does use uh, standard UV5R type cable. I had some of the stereotypical driver problems, so if you're not very good with the computer, you might want to have a friend help you out programming this rig. That's all I can say. Anyway. Stay tuned. We'll have uh, more info to follow. And I like to do real reviews where I beat on them and criticize things. Um, far too many people online seem to have reviews that are like advertisements, not reviews. You know? For instance, this flashlight, it looks impressive. It sucks. It's terrible. You know? <laughs> Just absolutely terrible. <laughs> um, anyway. We'll give uh, more of a real review after I thoroughly go through this radio and attempt to break it. So. Stay tuned for that, and thanks for tuning in.